you for your presence, Father, as we pray. Before we ever got up here this morning, Father, we thank you. We just prayed that you would inhabit the praises of your people. And in your presence is fullness of joy. We thank you for the joy of the Lord that is present now. We thank you for the presence of God, Father. We thank you, Father, for the anointing this morning of the Holy Spirit that breaks every yoke of bondage, Father. We thank you for this day, for your many blessings, Father. And before we even get started, as Miss Lord mentioned, Father, we thank you. This Memorial Day weekend, I believe it's tomorrow, but this weekend, Father, we thank you, Father, for every individual that paid the ultimate price so we could stand in this house this morning and have a freedom to worship you and praise you and glorify you. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy, for we know that freedom is not free. But many paid the ultimate price, and we thank you and honor those and their families. We thank you, fathers, who bring it over into the spiritual realm. We thank you freedom was not free. But Jesus paid the price, oh, to set us free with his very life, death, burial, and thank God, resurrection on the third day. We thank you this morning for the Lord Jesus Christ and the freedom that we have in him. And it's in him that we live and move this morning and have our being. We thank you, Father, this morning in the name of Jesus for this group of people. You are the only one that knows the state of every heart and life. The only one that knows, Father, tomorrow better than we know the present and the past. You know the word from your word and the anointing of the Spirit of God that's to accompany the word this morning if we're going to be effective in ordering their lives forever for you. So I thank you now as the pastor of this particular local assembly as I open my mouth now in just a few moments to speak. It will not be man's plans, thoughts, or ideas, but it will be what thus saith the Holy Spirit. I know that I prayed and heard from heaven. And I know, Father, that I need help this morning. I need help every day and every message, but I need help this morning. And I just thank you're going to lead and guide me by the Spirit of God. That it's going to be what thus saith the Holy Ghost in and through the Word. Their hearts are open, hearts and minds open and receptive to receive this Word this morning, Father. They're going to receive with meekness the engrafted Word, as the Bible says, which is able to save their souls, change their mind, change their lives. They're going to receive it. And Father, we just believe they're going to leave here not like they came, but change forever. Yes. Now, as we've already prayed, Father, but it's worth reiterating, worth repeating, we thank you for the Holy Spirit of God. He's a perfect gentleman. We say, again, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. Move as you see fit. We thank you today through the Word and the Spirit of God. You're raising up a great and mighty exceeding army. Great and mighty, as oh my, just a moment I'm looking at, great and mighty men and women of God. Families on fire for God. Youth, children, hunger for God. We thank you these are they. Anointed of the Spirit of God is turning the world upside down for you. And we thank you the last amen. Yes, as we've said, these lives will be changed forever. But most importantly, all that's said and done, give you the glory. Honor and praise you so deserve. We thank you it's done now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated and the children can be dismissed. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're just going to follow God's plan. We believe he knows best. If he knows best, we're going to listen to him. Yes, Don't you agree with the word? Yes. yes, you agree with the word, and I agree with the word. We agree with the word, we're going to live by the word. Right? If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Haggai. What are we going to Haggai? Haggai, whatever you want to say. What are we going there for? We're just going to follow the Lord. We'll just start with chapter 1. I'm not going to read the whole thing. We've ministered on this once or twice before. But this is a message that started one way. It's so far removed from my mindset, what I'm going to minister on. It started one way, and it took the Lord three days to give me the message of change the title this morning. I'll give it to you in a minute, and it'll excite you. You should be excited this morning because this will be, I've been ministered, in some form or fashion, I've been ministering behind the pulpit, although it started off, obviously, just a little few exhortations, five or ten minutes there or there. But for 23 years, and I've never ministered on this topic that I'm going to minister on this morning. So as I get into it, if you say, well, that's just what his pet peeve is or what other people say and all this kind of stuff, I've never ministered along these lines one time since I've been in ministry, and it took the Lord three days to get it to me. I started off out of Haggai. That's where I started, and I was praying this morning when I changed the title. I said, Lord, do you still want me to start there? And he said, yeah, because it's right on time. This will be a message that will help everybody. 
but it will be a, a message that is specifically for somebody and especially for a particular family. You say, do you know who they are? I do not. And I have not asked the Lord, and nor do I care if He would tell me. In, in ministry, as far as being your pastor, I'm here to help you if you need me, but I don't try to, to delve into all the minute details of your life. I want to teach you how to hear God for yourself. Teach you how to hear the Holy Spirit. Let Him lead and guide you through the Word. Amen. If you need me, I'll be there for you. But I don't get around trying to get in depth in everybody's life and then get up here and preach about it. That's fleshly preaching. It'll benefit nobody. But in Haggai, this is... We're just going to read a couple of scriptures here in all honesty. I'll give you the title in a minute so you get real excited about it. Just so you know, we're going to talk about Jezebel this morning. So we have plenty to shout about. You, say, you already know that that's... You, you have people that run around today. It's a legitimate deal. But you have people run around today calling everybody Jezebel and all this kind of stuff. I don't do that. You have people that look down upon women and think men are up here and women's a doormat. I don't do that. So I always try to just be led by the Spirit of God. <laughs> this will apply how it applies. It will help everybody because you'll be on guard. Amen? Amen? Very deceptive spirit. Very deceptive. So you'll not know it if you don't know the Word of the Spirit. It will be right up under your nose and you have no idea. Amen. Causing all sorts of destruction and you'll think it's coming from somewhere else. Amen. Matter of fact, they're a master of the art of manipulation and deception. They'll make you think the problem with somebody else somewhere else and they're the problem the whole time. Amen? You'll get excited in a minute because I don't care what I think. We tell you all the time in this church. I say, don't run out when I say this, but we don't care what you think. <laughs> but before you run out, listen, we don't care what I think. I got this message the same way I get all of it. I pray and study and pray in the Holy Ghost and do what He tells me to do. Like I said, it took Him three days to get me to this. I didn't pick up on Jezebel until yesterday morning. I've been studying Ahab, Naboth, obviously. We'll get there in a minute. And Jezebel and her part to play in it. But he said, no, this is what I want you to major on, so I'm going to major on it. That are with you. Yes. Haggai chapter 1, verse 1. He said, in the second year of Darius the king, the sixth month and the first day of the month came the word of the Lord to Haggai the prophet, Zerubbabel, have you say that, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saith this Lord, saying, this people say, the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Who's the prophet speaking on behalf of? God. Is it time for you, O you, to dwell in your sealed houses, in this house lying waste? Talking about at that time God's house, which be the temple. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, He said, Consider your ways. That was my first item. I scratched it out this morning. It was consider your ways. This morning as you're here, it'd be beneficial for everybody. But there's somebody here, especially a particular family, I say this by the Holy Ghost, you need to consider the decisions that you're contemplating making because they're not of God. Matter of fact, and I'm way ahead of myself, I got in the shower this morning between 6.30 and 7 o'clock, and sometimes the Lord speaks to you, and you know God means what He says. You know that. But there's times when He speaks to you, you know He means what He says. Because if you're in tune with the voice of the Holy Ghost, He'll speak angrily. You say, oh, God, can, God doesn't get angry, that's sin. It's not sin, and God gets angry. And if you get in the Bible, you'll see Jesus got angry. Amen. The Bible says so. That's why the Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Yes, God can get angry. Yes. But this is what he told me, and this will apply to somebody. And I'm ahead of myself. He said, there's somebody that's been continually seeking the wisdom of God concerning a decision and direction. He said, you tell them this morning, it's not coming. And he said, this is why. The wisdom of God is never available for anything or any situation that is not the will of God. He said, they're seeking wisdom to do something that I've never told them to do. And this is why I'm not, they're not going to have the wisdom. He said, they're frustrated because they say, I need wisdom, I need wisdom. They say, James 1, 5 says, if you ask God for wisdom, any man lack wisdom, ask for it, and he'll give it to you liberally or freely. And you're standing on that scripture. It doesn't work unless you're doing the will of God. He doesn't give you. He said, that I, they will never have the wisdom of God to do something that's not the will of God. God's not going to tell you how to do something he never told you to do to begin with. You understand that? That comes from the Holy Ghost in the shower. Not Pastor Jason. There's a lot of people think I'm smarter than I am. I appreciate it. But I'm not. As smart as some people think I am, and I'm smarter than others think I am. 
You say, where do you fall in between? I don't care. It's not about my intellect. It's about the Holy Ghost. Amen? He said, I'm not going to tell any of my people how to do something I never told them to do to begin with. That's why there's no direction. He said, stop asking for it. Now, if that's you, you'll know it's you. You know it's of God or not. But now if you're always thanking and weighing instead of seeking God and praying, you need to be careful with that. What's God said? Amen? But he said here, Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You've sown much and bring in little. I'm going to say this first. In verse 5 and verse 7, he said, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Now if we went to the NLT, he said this. Look at what is happening to you. That was, that's the way it's translated. Look at what is happening to you. And he said in verse 6, he said, you have, this is NLT, Haggai 1 verse 6, you planted much but harvest little. You eat but you're not satisfied. You drink but you're still thirsty. You put on clothes but you cannot keep warm. It's kind of sounds like some of those churches over in Revelation. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. You're doing a lot, but you're not fulfilled. Verse 8 says, NLT, go up into the hills, bring down timber, and rebuild my house. Then I will take pleasure in it and be honored. He's instructed them. Their focus has been in the wrong place. They had nice houses. They had food. They had clothes. They had jobs. They had wages. Right? But they were empty and unfulfilled. Why were they empty and unfulfilled? Well, the, the, he's telling them. Their priorities are out of order. They're building the wrong house. You know, we have, very often we get caught up and we don't realize we think that activity is productivity, and that's not necessarily true. <laughs> Just because there's a lot of busyness and things going on and maybe even sweat of the brow, you can work towards the wrong things that will take you further away from the will of God instead of bringing you to God and His will. Amen? Amen? I'd ask you this morning, this is all by the Holy Ghost. I'll just give you the title because this is just how I preach. I know there'll be little jokes and comments and stuff. I don't care. No more than I usually do. But the title of it is going to be this this morning. And we're going to look at this, how you come to this place. It's going to be the Jezebel spirit. And again, you say, well, this is your pet peeve. This is what you think. I've never preached this in my life. I don't talk about it. It's not my, I see it. I've been with it repeatedly. It's in the church for sure. In almost every church. But I ask you today, what are you building? What are your goals? What are you working towards today? And, and if anything you're doing, it, are you doing it in God's direction? Remember, God's not going to give you the wisdom or show you how to do something or even provide for you to do something that He never called you to do to begin with. Right? Are you fulfilling His plan? Where God guides, He provides. <coughs> Now, this was two weeks ago. This may or may not be significant to you. We have what we call the Believer Service out of 1 Corinthians 14, where we come together that Wednesday night, School of the Spirit. And it wasn't me that ministered, but we had other people to minister, right? We let other people speak that night as the Lord's instruction. And matter of fact, there's probably half men and half women. Women are used in the church here, as you can see. Reverend Linda Boodle taught last week. We believe women are blessed and women are anointed. But as unpopular as to today's society, not only can men be wrong. Women can be wrong. That's cursing today. Don't throw any stones. But it's true. Humility will acknowledge I could be wrong. No matter what your gender is. And I know many are confused about that today as well, but still. We can help you. You say, that's not funny. No, because it's the devil and we'll get you set free. Right? But this is what the Lord said. He said that this is, this is extremely important. It's come after extended time of praying in the Holy Ghost. It's hitting pastor's ideas. So I'd encourage you to listen. God's trying to help everybody, but there's somebody in here. He's trying to cut some mess off in your life at the head to help you avoid destruction. I always have said my messages, because I take them seriously, and they come from God. My messages are life and death. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe this one is more of one than many that I preach in a long time. So I listen if I was you. It'd be good to listen to what God's saying today. And I'm going to give you scripture and verse, not just what I think. Anybody can say some things. And then say, God told you. Anybody do that. But we're going to back it up with a word. He said, there are some in your congregation who are very frustrated and discouraged. They are living presently in a state of discontent, dissatisfaction with about everything. They're never happy. The reason for this 
is that they have not kept me first and they have not maintained and guarded their heart. They have prayed about many things and received little to no results or answers. They cannot understand why. And I want to tell them today why it's been this way. As these things have been going on, they have turned this inward discontent. This is a process we're going to see in the Bible. They turned this inward discontent. You know, a lot of people get upset with you and you they don't, you're not the issue. A lot of people get upset with a lot of people, but the true problem is I used to live there. I used to live there. I know in, in my own family, when me and Laura used to have a lot of problems, I'm not going to say what she was accountable for or not. She'd have to decide that. But I know a lot of times there was misery in my house because I was miserable. Amen. And I projected that on my house Amen. and on my home. And it started with me. I was responsible. And I had to be. Amen? And when I made those adjustments, things just changed automatically just about. Now, that doesn't mean Miss Harley doesn't have a part. But she's not the man of my house and I'm not the woman of my house. Amen? Amen? Mike said, thank God. Yes. <laughs> but now, currently, this is the Holy Spirit. He said there, I'm saying every bit of this. This came two Wednesday nights ago. I had it on my notebook, a yellow, a yellow sticky note. Because I said, Lord, do you want me to say that? He gave it to me Wednesday morning, not this past week, but the one before. And he never told me anything else about it until Friday morning this week. And I've been studying ever since. But he said, they are now living in a state of offense towards almost everybody around them, even some that I've ordained and divinely appointed in their life. Out of this offense, this is what he told me when it first started, out of this offense, they are about to leave their post where I place them and take a step that will bring destruction to the family unit. This is what he told me to do. He said, you speak this boldly and plainly today because I'm saying this to help them and because I love them not to hurt them. Do you know whatever God says and does is to help us, yeah. not hurt us? Do you know when you pray and don't get your prayers answers, whether it's popular or unpopular? Do you know you cannot be offended and hear from God? Yeah. To be offended, and it's the hardest people to help. He said, why is offended people the hardest people to help? Because somebody that is offended is 100% sure that they have the problems they have because the other person is wrong. Yeah. So when you go to talking to them about being wrong, oh God, they get on fire. <laughs> they don't like it at all. I am not wrong. They're wrong. Well, two wrongs don't make a right. Amen. You're responsible for the state of your heart. And what nobody else does gives you an excuse for your heart to be wrong. Right. Nobody. Amen. That ain't the kind of message that's selling like hotcakes today, but it's the Bible. Amen. Amen. Amen? The Bible says in Psalm 66, whatever there, verse 18, that if you regard, regard iniquity in your heart, then God will hear you. You can pray all day long and be offended to no avail. Right? right? Because faith works by love, and if you're offended, are you in love? No, we don't have time to go through all of it, but we know Mark 11, 23. says, who shall, as I shall say, and not doubt, and doubt not in his heart, he'll have whatsoever he says. Now that word doubt in the Greek, I'm not going to go slow enough for you to write it down, but we know it's 1252 in the Greek. We, use it, we do use that regularly talking about faith. He shall say, and not doubt in his heart, He'll have what he says, right? We know it's important for you to receive the word, meditate on the word, and speak the word. But once you receive the word and begin speaking the word, what is the enemy always coming to do? The Bible says in Mark 4, when the word is sown, this is why many people get right on with God, receive from God as far as word and direction, get on fire for God, and then fall flat because they don't realize the process. The word is a seed. The seed is sown. And the seed has within it the ability to change and alter your life forever. But once that seed is sown, the devil's coming with the cares of this world. The devil's coming to steal with offense. His goal is to get you to what? Doubt. And doubt not. In the Greek, it means to separate thoroughly. Satan's go through offense. Satan's go through all sorts of things. The cares of this life, the world, the love of this world, love of money, whatever it may be. Anything he can use, he's endeavored to separate you from the life-changing Word of God. Right? Amen. It means to withdraw from. Hesitate, stagger, or waver. It also means to decide. I thought that was good. If you find yourself making decisions about what you could do, if your prayers don't work, you're not in faith. Because when you're in faith, you believe that you receive what God has promised. 
You don't have plan B, C, or D, or Z. Plan A works. You don't need a second plan. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. We might not know how it's going to work out, but we know it's going to work out because God said it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I'm not making any other decisions. I'm not, I'm not in faith. You say, well, I know that I trust God. I am not in faith if I say I'm trusting God. And the whole time I'm trusting God, I'm saying if this doesn't happen, we could do this. That's not faith. That's doubt. That's not faith. Faith doesn't have or need options. I said faith doesn't need enough. There's no plan B. This is what God said. We're not worried about nothing else. All the cares that come, we cast them upon the Lord. I know you all upset because you all ready to get the Jezebel. <laughs> Y'all wonder where, where is he going with this? But well, I come in here like I always do. I've got more notes than I can go over and all this kind of stuff. And we're just going to follow God. Amen? So Satan is after your faith through offense. Many today have released the word <laughs> which, they, which had within it the ability to change your life and bring to pass that thing you were believing for. But the problem never was that God did not answer your prayer. You allowed the devil to steal the word. That we live in an age in society, especially in our country, when nothing is my fault. If the word does not work in my life, it's my fault. Amen. And I have to receive that. It's my fault. You say, so, no, no, no. So and so might be used blatantly of the devil to hinder the plan of God for your life, but they cannot stop it. Amen. Only you can stop it. Only you can make the decision to hold fast to the confession of your faith or to turn loose of God's word. Amen? It's not anybody else. People say, my wife, my husband, my children, my this, my that. You won't believe what they did. Get focused on what God's done for you. Yeah. Not what somebody else has done to you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Alright, go to, go to, let's go to, let's go to talk about Jezebel. We talk about Ahab first so all the ladies can get excited. Which one of them was more wrong? They're both wrong, so it really don't matter. You're just going to say what God said say. Amen? First Kings, uh, 21. First Kings 21. And again, I titled this the Jezebel Spirit, the instruction of the Holy Ghost in all my life. Never ministered it one time. So y'all get the first crack at it. Amen. I have studied it perfectly, son, and I've dealt with it a lot. We want to look at this couple. You say, why would God have me use this couple? I want you to see this couple that made these decisions to get what they wanted. They worked together to get what they wanted. You know, there's power in the prayer of agreement. There's power in agreement. But the Lord's having me to minister this message this morning because some of y'all, even in your families, is in agreement on the wrong thing. You can get an agreement running your family right into destruction. You say, we talked about this and we weighed this out and we decided this was the best. God knows what's best for you. You don't know what's best for you. You can't know what's best for you. You don't know what's to come. <laughs> He's the only one that knows the future. I can't count the people even. I don't know who this is for, but I can't count the people who's even made decisions for jobs. And they've come talking to me about it. So this is the best job ever. I had to move away from the family, move away from the church, move away from everywhere God put them, and move way off over here. And they asked me about it before they leave. I said, it's one of two things. I don't know you and God's going to know. I said, I'll tell you if he tells me as your pastor. I said, it's one of two things. Even it's, either it's a bait and trap for the devil to get you out of your place called there, or either it's a God thing, you'll be provided for and blessed. He'll provide a church and family. Everything you need there is one or the other. It's of God or the devil. Very often they look the same. Matter of fact, a lot of times the devil's plan looks flashier than God's. It looks better. He's a master of the art of deception. And God don't have to make things up. You ought to take him at his word. You don't have to make it look pretty and beautiful. If God said it, it's good. Because God is good. He'll provide for you. Amen. This individual packed up and moved away 100, 150 miles away or whatever. He said, what happened? Well, this job that was going to be the Savior lasted about three months. And then the guy that made all these promises broke every promise he made. Lost his job and he's away from his family, away from the church, away from his pastor, away from everybody because he did what was best for him. God knows what's best for you. You're a Christian. Listen to God. The Father knows best. We listen to him, right? He said, I'm doing this and I can't do this and I can know. Don't make all those decisions. Pray, listen, and obey and God will show you the way. 1 Kings 21. Now we look before we ever got into this, because I can't go way back. I don't have time. Before we ever get into this, looking at Ahab and Jezebel, judgment's already been pronounced on Ahab. And, and the reality of it is, he's already headed towards his death anyways. But these are things he was doing. They are the, they're, these are the things he was doing, even headed uh, towards death. And I don't think you want to follow him. If I was you, I wouldn't follow his path. 
and his plan. Even with people around you, you're supposed to love everybody. But we need to realize, just like God will put the right people in your path to influence you down the right way, the devil will put the wrong people in your life to get you to go his way. So you still got to make sure, no matter what it looks or sounds like, that you're listening to God. He knows what's best. Amen? It's where most people mess up. I'm going to start in 1 Kings 21.1. It's where most people mess up. If it's something that maybe looks bad or looks this way or looks questionable, they'll pray. But if it's something that looks good, they won't even pray about it. They'll just say, it must be God because it looks good. Everything that looks good is not of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, 21 1, it came to pass after these things. Uh, came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Two, and Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Buy from it. Verse 3, Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me. And then there's reasons for that. We go back to Genesis and Exodus. We don't have time. This was family land. That I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. So that you understand, we have three primary characters here. we got Ahab, the king of Samaria. We'll look at Jezebel in a minute, his wife. This is Naboth here. Naboth had a vineyard, right? This was family land. He wanted to keep it in the family. It was, But where was it located? Right up next to Ahab's uh, uh, property. You know how you got, you say you got 10 acres and you got two acres over here and four over here. You'd like, and when you got able financially, you, the best property for you to buy is the one to make sure it's bigger. Right? That's, that's, the, that's what was right beside him was Naboth's vineyard and it was uh, uh, fruitful and all kind of stuff as well if you study it out. Ahab, Ahab was willing to trade or to pay for it. But what was the problem? Naboth wouldn't sell it. It wasn't for sale. You know, there's stuff that has family or sentimental value. It don't matter if it ain't worth a thousand. You couldn't pay somebody a million dollars for it. You know, do. It means more to them than money does. And that's what this vineyard meant to Naboth. And the reality of it is, when Naboth said no, that should have been the end of it. But it wasn't. Amen? Should have been the end of it, but it wasn't. Look at, let's look at how Ahab responded in verse 4. This is important. And this applies. Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. Because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. You can't have the word. And he lay down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. He simply got upset because Naboth wouldn't do what he wanted him to do. Amplified says it this way. This is verse 4. And Ahab, already displeased by the Lord's message to him. You say, why is that important? This isn't even where the incident started. So you've got to be careful when you follow down some of these paths. You'll find out that once a person gets offended, they get more offended. And it gets worse and worse and worse and worse until they're separated from about everybody around them. They can help them. You get isolated by themselves. Proverbs 28, 1 Amplified. Read it later when you get on it. Man that seeks his own desires. You see, he isolates himself. Proverbs 21. But he said, they have already just depressed by the Lord's message to him, because we didn't go back, but at the end of verse 20, God's already pronounced judgment on him. He came into his house more resentful and sullen. He was already resentful and sullen. But this is not where his problem started. He'd already been heavy. It's in verse 42 of chapter 20. He'd already been heavy. He'd already been depleted. Displeased. He'd already been angry. He'd already been offended. Now, the picture of Ahab is this. He did not get his way. This, this guy's the king now. This is the king of the land, king of Samaria. He poked his lips out. He went home. He refused to eat supper. This is the Bible. I'm telling you in, in 2021 terms, this is the Bible. You look at it for yourself. He went to his bedroom, he laid in his bed, stuck his face in the pillow for a minute, and then Jezebel comes in, he won't even look at her, he's pouting so much he turns his head to the wall. He's a big baby. That's what he is. He's a big baby, and he's sulking. Amen? 
And I know if you call anybody today a big baby, you're hurting their feelings. Well, just, just we got to get over the God of our feelings. And get over the God who is a spirit that communicates with us who are spirits, who's to be led and guided by the spirit, who's to bring the flesh into subjection. They cannot rule us. They will destroy your life. Amen. Amen? And it's happening everywhere. As much in the church as anywhere. We need to understand no family, your family, my family, no family will ever accomplish the vision of God with a man like this in their home. He is a baby and not a leader. Now, it's bad enough when one of you is not listening to God. But let's look at what his wife did. It's where you get in trouble, you get in agreement. And I got this in my Bible. This is prominent. Right? There'll be no apologies for this message, but I do preach the truth in love because my heart's desire is that this ministers to people. And if you are in this situation today, you realize what it is, catch yourself, repent, and God's able to lead God and direct you into success. Yes. I don't minister anything to hurt you, but to help you. Amen. Amen. That's the goal here at this church. I'm your pastor. And, and whether you see it that way or not, spiritually speaking, I'm your spiritual father if I'm your pastor. Yes. And that's why I'm talking to you is as a father, not to hurt you. I have no hurt or desire for anybody in this place in, in a bad way. Right? Now, just like today, the reality of it is Jezebel was the man. And what I have written in my Bible is this. Ahab is the passive man and Jezebel was the dominant <coughs> woman. Now I thought y'all was going to dance like we was shouting out all together. But that's what this was. It's a passive man and a dominant woman resulting in no direction and ending in destruction. I didn't say they wouldn't be busy. They might have had a lot going on, but it doesn't mean it was God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Matter of fact, I, I wish I could just go to Ephesians chapter 5 and talk about being filled with the Spirit. Four things you need to know. First thing, once you feel the Spirit overflowing, they're speaking. And we majored on that. We majored on that, but there's four things. Not just one. The last of the four submitting to authority. God ordained authority in the church, in the home, and in the earth. See, I'm filled with the Spirit. I danced in the Spirit when Reverend Linda Buddha laid hands on me last week. That's good. Are you obeying the Word today? Do you consider God's way the only way? That's why the world's so messed up. And I'm not preaching to the world, I'm preaching to the church, but it's in the church today. We're doing things our way. God's way is the only way that works. It won't work no other way. Amen. 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 I told you what the Holy Ghost had told me to keep telling you repeat me. You say, you say that all the time. It's what he told me. He said, you're praying for a move of God. He said, the what a move of God truly is, is to find out how I'm moving and move with me. He said, if I'm moving this way and you're going that way, there's going to be much, I mean, little anointing, if any. He'll always bless us as far as he can. But we can't do our thing, our way, and expect God's blessing. Amen? We got his wife here in verse 5. But Jezebel, and I know as I minister this, what some of y'all start doing. You start thinking about everybody here as a Jezebel. <laughs> That's what usually happens. You start thinking about all the people in your life as a Jezebel. We're not in the name calling. It won't help nobody in any way. It won't help you none. Amen? You say, oh, my wife's a Jezebel. You better make sure you're not Ahab. Because you're in big trouble if you are. Because you're both going the wrong way. Amen? Amen? <laughs> and I'm just going to say this as your pastor, and I love you. But there is somebody in here that you stepped into this. You stepped over into this. You need to repent. And you're late. You stepped over into this. And through manipulation and deception, you're trying to take your family in a way that's not God. And if your husband listens to you, he's foolish. And he'll never have wisdom. Because it's his job to begin with to pray and get the vision for your family. That's cursing today, but it doesn't matter. That was my initial message. You go read Ephesians 5 for yourself. It's his job. It's his responsibility. So I'll go to work you're supposed to. But that ain't where it stops. Amen? Amen? So I don't know what to do. Well, you better put this church. Because we're going to teach you. So you can walk in. And then that won't be an excuse anymore. Amen? Amen? Verse 5. This is what Jezebel did. Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad? And thou eatest no bread. Now, you might not want to say it that way, but God's Word's translation said this. His wife Jezebel came and asked him, Why are you so resentful of everything? Why don't you eat? And verse 6 says this, 
And he said unto her, Because I spake to Naboth a Jezreelite. And said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered me. He told me. I can't believe he said this to me. I will not give you my vineyard. <laughs> Like a teeny baby crying to his mommy. Ahab tells Jezebel why he's pouting. Naboth, Naboth won't give him what he wants. I'm going to tell you guys something that your wife may or may not tell you. She does not want an adult baby to raise. She don't want one. If you think she does, you're deceived. No, and you, you, you can talk to my women. And when I say my women, I'm talking about my wife and my girls and my daughters. You can talk to my wife. Don't believe in being mistreated. Don't believe in abusive. I don't think nobody thinks my crew's abused. I'm not any different at home than I am here. They say I cut up and joke more, but as far as out the way, being mean, all this kind of stuff, I'm not a different person at home than I am on the pulpit. I do not just preach and teach this. They can attest every day that this is what I live. This is who I am. They are not mistreated. I'm the man of my home. There's no question. Miss Lordy is the woman of our house. There's no question. We don't have any role problems because we got a job description. It's right here. We don't need to ask nobody. Say, so this is the way we do it now. That's dumb. It's not the way we do it now. You are not intelligent if you think you can improve on God's divine design. Amen. You do not have the wisdom of God. Yeah. This is the way. Amen. This is the way. God's way is the best way. <laughs> and I wrote it down by the Holy Ghost so to bear, bear repeating. I said, men, listen up. That's how this whole message came. I'm going to tell you something that every single godly woman, that's why I like my notes because I let that part off. Every godly woman, every godly woman, although she might not tell you, would like for you to know. She does not want another big child to take care of. She wants a man. She does not want to be bullied or abused. That's not what I'm talking about. I know the generation that we come out of years, years back, you know, the, this message about why I submit to the husband means that the man, the whole entire gender of mankind, man's up here and woman's down here in the dirt. That's not in the Bible either. Amen? Amen. That's not the strong scripture. I pray to God that he lets me move into God's divine design, talking about the home next week, because that's really what I'm going to teach you, especially after teaching this. We want to help you. She does not want to be bullied or abused, but she does want a leader. You are not and never will make her a happy woman by being passive. Doing every single thing she tells you to do and never offering any God as her leadership. Remember, I said a godly woman. Per the Bible, she not only wants this, but she needs it. Your home is not running right because you're not doing your job. So don't be frustrated at nobody else. You are doing what your wife says and not what God says. If that's the case, it'll never work. Now, you ladies, don't be a Jezebel. Because if you do, you'll ruin your entire family. The word Jezebel in the Hebrew is this, or part of it. It means, I don't even know how to say this properly, unhusbanded. H-U-S-B-A-N-D-E-D. -E you say, well, that means without a husband. No, it doesn't. It means even if she's married, she's the boss. She's the boss. She's running things. He said, I thought this was best. You ought to see your results. Number one, I know it's not. And number two, if you read the Bible, you know better. And I'm talking about God-ordained positions in the home. God set the home up, and you can't improve on it. Amen. Amen. And you can say, well, this is my situation, that situation. I didn't come here to condemn. I come here to exhort you concerning God's plan for your home, regardless of what state is in. We preach a standard and we'll do anything we can to help you get there. It's not here to cut your feet off money. But it is to discourage you if you go in the wrong way. Jezebel, one of the ways she operates, matter of fact, I read a quote the other day, and it said this about Jezebel. It said she will convince you that she truly loves God. But the part that she won't tell you is that she is God. She can look very godly. Why? Because she's very manipulative. We're about to read. She's very manipulative, very deceptive. She'll lie in a second. Matter of fact, God says a pastor could be so frustrating because it's happened to us numerous, numerous times. That's why a lot of times a lot of situations can't get straightened out and other people can't figure out why. 
They think, is this guy over here and this guy over there? No, you need to straighten out with him. No, he's married to a Jezebel. You don't even know who the prophet is. That's why you can't fix nothing. Because the way I describe them is this way. They're slick as glass just like you pour Wesson all over them. They'll lie in a minute so you can squeeze them, grab them, do whatever you can, try to choke them and they slip right away. On this side of the wall, <laughs> grinning, smiling, cheese and everything else. And so help me to God, they'd step through the door. I said, you believe that? You will not even know how many times that I've seen that. How many times we've seen that. It'll blow your mind if you was exposed to it enough. That stuff that just getting the church has been there for years. And a lot of times the sweetest semen and the prettiest semen and all everything floating along semen. Oh, they get on the other side of the wall. This whole ball game when the door shuts. This whole ball game. Another person completely. The husband knows it because he lives with it. Lying a minute, controlling, dominant. Come across possibly as quiet and sweet as sugar. She chooses what she wants and does not care what she has to do to get it or who she has to use to get there. It means nothing to her. Everything is to accomplish her agenda. Now, you got Ahab, Jezebel, and we got a big old baby. She's married to Ahab, right? And he's the king of Samaria. This is a match made in hell. You could say, <laughs> if, you get to the end of the, if you get to the end of the scriptures, you'll see it's true. <laughs> Isn't that right, Brother Bill? That's right. You, if you read the rest of this chapter, you'll know it's true. The Bible said there was no more evil like them. I mean, that bad. It's true. It wasn't made in heaven. But he's pouting like a baby. You ladies, if, you want, if your husband's pouting like a baby, don't give him a pass card. Do Loving you, you women should. You, it doesn't matter if your husband's ahead. You should still be able to be honest and truthful with him. That's the, we got these relationships where he'll say anything or she'll say anything, and the other one's not allowed to say nothing. No, you should have accountability with each other. Right. I'm the head of my home. That doesn't mean that if Miss Lorita sees things in my life or I say something that I shouldn't, that she can't bring that to my attention, and she don't need to do that in front of everybody and try to embarrass me. Right. Amen. She can do it respectfully. We're here to help each other. Right? What I'm talking about is if you don't get on the same page, you're in trouble if you're on the wrong page. Right? So he's pouting like a baby in verse 7. She said unto him, I think I read this, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. This is what she said to him in verse 7. Aren't you the king of Israel? In, in God's word translation. Message Bible, he, she said this to, to little pouty baby. Aren't you the boss? What's she saying? Don't they know who you are? You're the king. You're the boss. What you say goes. You know, we've dealt with this a lot. And this is how Jezebel will control their husband if you're not careful. I have to preach this. I don't know if I'm You all receive it, right? We've heard these words repeatedly, but it's exactly in line with this Bible. She'll be telling him, you need to be your own man. You need to make your own decisions. And she'll get over there and huff and puff and blow him up, so to speak. Oh, be your own man. She, he's not his own man. He's not even making his own decisions. He just don't even know it. She's using that to separate him from God-ordained connections in his life so he can do what she's telling him to do. She's not encouraging him to pray and do what God says. That's a wrong spirit. But you'll mistake that. You say, well, I've been seeking this encouragement. I've been seeking us to be on the wrong page. I mean, the same page for so long. And now it seems like we are. You better be careful which page you're on. It may not be God's page. Matter of fact, this service is legit whether you accept it or not. Because I don't know nothing about none of your lives, to be honest with you. That's why I fellowship with you. And I love you, but I don't spend a whole bunch of time with anybody because people will think, well, he just knows this side or the other. No, I spend time with the presence of God. I come out and preach and you do what you want to do with it. But this is what she was doing. My husband, and he said, my husband is his own man. He makes his own decisions. The entire time, he's being unknowingly led and guided by her. She's the puppet master. You ever seen this happen? Yes. Numerous times. Numerous times. We've had people before. Had a guy. This is numerous times. We had one guy down at the other, other church there years ago. Now he was a pastor. I wasn't pastor. He was involved, and he's a you know, good guy. All this kind of stuff. His wife was not, not godly and, and 
she come to church with him, but she wasn't into the church thing, as she called it, and all this kind of stuff. And she worked on him for a long time. And this guy and daddy, he come out of a bad lifestyle. This guy and daddy had a good relationship. Daddy was kind of mentoring and, you know, coming along with his walk with God. But she fought it every step of the way. She didn't want to do a church. And she didn't like him to be around daddy and all this kind of stuff. She had things she wanted to do and a place she wanted to go on the weekend and all this kind of stuff. She didn't want nothing to do with, you know, being committed to anything. I'll never forget the Sunday morning after this might have been Sunday night. It was a night. It was a Sunday night or Wednesday night. And this guy, he come down and, and he was going out to church. He had his little baby's uh, carrier with him. He's walking out to the church. He was bawling, crying. Bawling, crying. Why? Well, was his last service. He finally submitted after several months to his wife. Decided he was quitting church. And of course, she told him, we'll just go to church somewhere else, somewhere closer where we live. And you know that never happened. That was just an excuse to get him out of church to begin with. Because she didn't want to go to church. She said, what happened? Well, she worked on him over and over again. Got him out of church. Got him away from daddy who was his pastor. Got him away from all of us who was divine connections. And she got over there and got her boyfriend. Well, that's what always happens. Whether it's a boyfriend or not, it ends in destruction. She got over there and got her boyfriend. They had two or three kids. Got her boyfriend. The family unit was destroyed. They was divorced not months after they left the church. And he cried just like a baby. What, what, what happened? He listened to her instead of God. He said, there's times I should listen to my wife. Absolutely. But you better always listen to God. I said, you better always listen to God. A Jezebel spirit will always try to get you away from your family, your pastor, and anyone else that can have influence in your life. Why is that? She only wants you to listen to her. I'm going to jump off here. Is that our job? I'm going to look at Joseph for a minute. Go to Genesis 39, I believe. Because I want you to see what how this happens. And what happened here? We come back to we'll come back to Jezebel. I know y'all want this to be a series, anyways. So I do find it interesting, even though we don't want to be that way. To know the word, the only way you can deal with the devil, if you want to know the truth about it, because he operates in darkness, is to shine light on that darkness. And the truth of the word is God's light. So you go to God's word and you shine this light. I see more families destroyed because of the spirit. I see why we've had people to, that literally would think that we hated their guts, us as pastors, and sometimes even as family, and, and we never had an issue with them whatsoever. But they had a Jezebel in their life, and they're always working to separate them. Want you to look at this. You all remember uh, Potiphar's wife, and you remember Joseph. This is important because the Holy Ghost said, "So I'm going to read more than I was intended on. I don't have to finish my message as long as we finish God's." And in Genesis 39, Joseph's got the favor of God, right? And now, let's start in verse 1. Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of the of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down hither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he's a prosperous man. Joseph was a man of God, the Bible says so. Right? And, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and the master Saul. He wasn't only blessed and prosperous by God, it was visible to others. He saw him, and, and that the Lord had made all that he did to prosper in his hand, and Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer of his house. His promotion. And all that he had put into his hand. And it came to pass from that time, from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all the land he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Do you understand what's going on? Joseph was a man of God, doing the work of God. He had the favor of God, and God was prospering him. And we see Potiphar saw that and put him up here in his house in a position, overseer in his house. And now because he's overseer in his house, Potiphar's house is being blessed like one before. Right? And here comes Miss Hot Pants in just a minute. Yeah, be honest about it. We like to lie in church, but that's what's coming on. That's what's about to happen. And I want you to see what she did and what she said. And what Joseph did wrong. See, a lot of times, fellas, and you ladies need to help your men, you don't have to do nothing wrong, just choose not to do right. And you have just as much problems. There's certain things you have to stand up against. There's certain things you can't tolerate. Amen? Amen? It's like here at this church. There's a lot of things with me being your pastor you can measure. But security, spiritually speaking, and what you're shielded from, you can't measure. You don't know how, you don't know what you're protected from because I'm your pastor. Because I'm going to walk with God and walk in the love of God. But if somebody walks in here and try to take this service over, I'm going to make a fool out of them. It's a bad mistake. You say, you shouldn't do that. You should walk in love. I'm an authority and i got a job to do. Right. They're not going to come in here and mess you up. Amen. Not as long as I'm here, I'm going to stop them. They say, I'm going to come say this and I'm going to come say that. I'm going to come say the other. I've had people tell me that before. 
said, what do you say? I said, just as much as I can in love. In love. There's a different one. Say, come on whenever you get ready. You wouldn't believe what Christians say sometimes. They still had cup. Because most of them's all mouth. That's what the devil is. He's nothing but mouth. Amen. And when you stand up to him in Jesus' name, but you got to stand up. Amen. You can't just let him do whatever he wants to do. Amen. you got to walk in your authority, right? And you ladies, you fellas, I know a lot of times, and can I say something that's honest that you might, I hope you don't get offended at. I don't mean this in the wrong way, but I've actually had people that go to this church to say this. So if you get mad, you have to get mad, even mad at people in there. In a lot of families, husbands and wives, this has been said to me by some of y'all. Different things you've been through. But it's something I've observed regularly. And it's not every case. It's not every case. But, but as, as a rule of thumb, there are some exceptions because different personalities are at play. But in a lot of homes with husbands and wives, she's upset because he won't stand up. He won't do nothing. And he's upset because she won't shut up. Did that come from some of y'all? Y'all told me that, so y'all get upset. She won't stop trying to take over, and he won't stand up and do nothing. So they're both working against each other. She's saying, I'm standing up and having to do all this because you won't do nothing. And he's saying, I'm not going to stand up because you're doing everything. Let's get in line with the Bible. Let's, let's do it God's way. Yes. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? I don't say those things to try to be funny or to try to hurt you or anything. That's not the goal. But I do want to be real. I don't want to be fake. And, and I want you to understand what God's saying. So he left, Potiphar, in verse 6, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not what he had. He didn't even know what all he had. That's why we trusted Joseph. Right? And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. He had another problem that some of us have been delivered from. We don't have a problem. He was handsome. He's good looking too. <laughs> and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, come pray with me. <laughs> that ain't what she said. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Jonathan and Patty want to pray. Yeah. Come pray with me. <laughs> Come pray with me. She said, come lie with me. Right? Well, if he'd just done it, everything had been all right. No, it would have been all right. But then the rest of this story wouldn't have happened. But in verse uh, verse 8, I got this marked up. I can't see the scripture number. But he refused. He refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master what is not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in, his in this house than I. It's talking about the responsibilities given. It wasn't a statement of arrogance. It's truth, humility. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but you, because you're his wife. And then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day, she's working him over. And you know she's sashaying around. You know what she's doing. Right? Oh my God, Alex. Oh, Lord Jesus. Alex is my hype man back there. He's back there grinning. He said she's got makeup on and all that good stuff. We're going to have Becky pray for her. But she's the only one who can pray for her. That's good. She's done. So, he, and he said, and she's working on him day by day that he hearkened not at her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men in the house there within. It was Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Oh, Jezebel loves no witnesses. She loves it when nobody else is around. Matter of fact, you'll find them very often. They can be in your midst, but they operate out of When nobody sees what they're doing. They can say anything they want to say, and all you got is their word. <coughs> And she called him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. She's trying to sleep with him. You understand that. And he took off running. You say, that's unscriptural. The Bible says flee. It is scriptural. It is. There's certain things and situations where you take authority and say no in Jesus' name. And there's certain things you put your running shoes on. And you get out of Dodge if you got a brain. Yeah. You say, I don't believe that, but you go ask King David. 
His butt should have been at war. He wouldn't have seen Bathsheba naked over there on the roof. He'd never seen her. He's in the wrong place at the wrong time. People say she looked this way and that way and the other way and she seducing him and doing all this stuff. If he was at war where he's supposed to be, he wouldn't have seen nothing she did. Nothing. Right? Don't get mad if you get seduced. If you want to be seduced. Yeah. And for all you the single, I say this by the Holy Ghost. Don't be praying for a Ruth while you're playing with a Jezebel. Because it won't work. So I'm believing for a woman of God, then who are you messing with? Don't you be believing for God to send you something like that? A godly woman? She don't want nothing to do with you. That's not what a godly, godly woman looking for a godly man. Yeah. Right? God is good. It's the truth. So I ain't never heard this kind of message before. <laughs> Me neither. It's one of those things that I, I've been telling you about on, on Wednesday nights that I'm so grateful for. It took me years to get there. But I finally discovered one thing. I'm called of God to be Jason Wallace and what he's called me to be. I'm not called to be everybody else is called to be. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to answer for what I've said and done this body. I'll answer for this service based on whether I'm doing what I want to do or whether God's told me to do it. Amen? But see, we got this going on. I'm working to a point. I promise it's going to be good. It'll be worth you hearing here in just a second. She called him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand. And fled and got him out. I got so much stuff coming up, I can say nothing. We got to fill it by the Spirit. I've always been faithful to Richard Lane. I'll say this one thing. And I used to work at Blumenthal. These guys were ungodly. Some of them did say that's Christian, but I don't believe they was. These guys were ungodly. And I was faithful to her. You know, in that kind of environment, they's all running around, sleeping around, talking dirty, and all this kind of stuff. Not everybody. Not everybody. Brother Tommy and Miss Frank, there's a lot of people out there that wasn't. But the majority, that's the way it was. You understand? There was people as Christians living for God. I'm not saying everybody. That'd be wrong. But we'd get there, and sometimes on the weekends it'd be slow. These guys were fascinated because there was a couple things I didn't do. It all cussed like sailors, and I wouldn't curse. I didn't curse. I saved, spirit-filled. I was ready not to cuss. I didn't cuss. Curse, whatever you call it. I didn't cuss. And they thought that was the funniest thing in the world. I was a supervisor, and I'd get mad and wouldn't cuss. And another thing that I was faithful to Lord, no matter what anybody else said or did. And they start saying all this stuff. You're telling me. If you was on this desert island and Miss Lonnie Lord, would never know or you was in this place with this woman and she looked like this and she looked like that and she propositioned you, you're telling me you wouldn't do anything. I said, listen, you would and you might as well go and do it because you're too stupid not to do it. If you end up somewhere with a woman that's naked other than your wife, you ain't got no brains not to commit adultery. And they would say things always trying to bait me and I'm thinking, this is messed up thinking, and the church has got some thinking like that. We need to be careful. It won't cost you no extra. But he said this, he ran, and it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment, and her hand was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house, we're in verse 14, and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. This woman is a liar. I said she's a liar, and she's a deceiver, and she's a troublemaker. But I guarantee you, as you see here, everybody believed her. She's convincing. She's a good liar. Amen. Can be such a liar. He came in unto me to lie with me. What really happened? You know, people say things to me sometimes, and I just tell them, I said, I'm not going to expose anybody else's sin, but you just don't know what you're talking about. You just don't know what you're talking about. You got no idea what you're talking about. You keep running your mouth and listen to the mouth runner, but you don't know what you're talking about. And I do say this, you just watch the fruit. You got a lot of things from a lot of people, but you can't have nothing from God. He came unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud, loud voice. What really happened? The opposite. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, this whole thing's a lie she just made up, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. He laid, she laid up his garment by her until his, his, her Lord came home. That, that's who? Potiphar. 17. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, this, this, this is what the Lord wanted me to point this out before we left here this day. This is what she said. The Hebrew servant, which you brought unto us, my God, this sounds like Genesis, with Adam talking to God. The Hebrew servant, which thou hast brought unto us, came in unto me to mock me. It came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried, he left his garment with me and fled out. Verse 19. 
And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife. Who's he listening to? Which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me that his wrath was kindled. Now I've got to highlight this. This is important. This won't cost you no extra. Verse 19. You say, why is this important? Because you listen to this before you leave. Somebody in here, this is going on in your life. You're being separated from your family and friends. You're being separated from your pastor. You say, oh, nobody knows that shit. God knows it. I said, God knows it. And it's why he's having me minister the message. I want you to see how this happens. This is going to be the telltale sign. Because this is what's going on in your house. Nobody knows about it. But you and God. You know I don't know because I don't live with you. And you ain't telling nobody else. Everybody else don't know either. But this is what she said. The Amplified of Genesis 39, 19. I'm not going to read all of this. But the King James says, It came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me that his wrath was kindled. Now we wouldn't use that language. But this is what the Amplified says. She told Potiphar, this is the way your servant treated me. And what happened? His wrath was kindled. Genesis 39, 19. Just a couple here. Translations anyway. No, I probably won't use many if any more scriptures. But God's word translation says this. When Potiphar heard his wife's story, especially when she said, this is what your slave did to me. Offense. And a Jezebel spirit together will always say this about those that they're trying to separate you from. You won't believe what they did to me. You won't believe how they talk to me. You, oh, I'm in your home right now. The anointing just dropped all over me when I said that. You better pay attention. You won't believe how they're treating me. You better watch that person. I said, you better watch it. They're a liar and they're a deceiver. You say, well, I don't think you should say that in church. Go home and read your Bible. Amen. Go home and follow the minister of Jesus. I'm sorry the church has got so soft it can't receive the truth anymore. Amen. But it's still the truth whether we like it or not. Amen. It's still the Bible whether we like it or not. He said in the NLT translation, it says Potiphar was furious. You know how many mad men I've dealt with? Mad as fired everybody around them for no reason whatsoever? None. The puppet master is playing with the puppet. And they don't even know. They ain't got no idea. NLT says this. He was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. That is the primary way. It's a language of offense. And it's the primary way that a woman that is operating in a Jezebel spirit will, dis, will, will divide you from everybody you're supposed to be with. Even people that you know have not mistreated them. You know, we've had people before, and I'm talking about some of y'all. There's people that said things about some of y'all that they missed. You don't mistreat nobody. And we know you. You don't mistreat people. That's a lot. There's different things that have been said about different people. I don't listen to what people say to us. I don't listen to what nobody says. You say, that's just rebellious. No. I have learned a lot of people will lie, number one. Number two, a lot of people are deceived. They're not lying, but they don't realize they bought a lie. So then when you repeat it, which is gossip, it is a lie. So people will say things about other people, and they don't even know what they're talking about. And then if you listen to them, you got a problem with people that should not be there. you got Potiphar. We're not reading the rest of the story for the sake of time. But Potiphar, we, where'd Joseph end up? He had favor the whole time. He would say, he's in jail. He's in prison. He must be guilty. No, he ran into a Jezebel spirit. He ran into Potiphar's wife who was a liar and a deceiver. She's mad because she didn't give what she wanted. She's got an agenda. She's got a plan and wouldn't do anything to get it. Can I leave you with something that will make you even more excited? This is what I'm going to leave you with today. And, and we come back. You know what happened to Ahab. You know what happened to Jezebel. Did it work out real good? Mm -hmm. It didn't work out very good at all. It worked out, we would say, very badly. This spirit does this. It may or may not apply to every situation, but in many seeks out other individuals they feel are weaker to control, influence, and dominate. Always dominating other people. 
very often will seem like they have a magnetic personality and people will say, I don't understand why people kiss up to them like they do. Because they have no idea. They're responding to a wrong spirit. They don't even know. <clears throat> not criticizing, but because they're not spiritual. They have an unnatural sense of self-importance. Require excessive, very often, admiration and attention. Like I tell you all the time, you don't find out what how somebody's walking in love or somebody's walking by faith or somebody's walking with God when everything's going their way. When they're being treated right and esteemed. You find out when things don't go right with the guy. You find out if they're walking by faith now. You find out during those times. It's when it seems like the bottom drops out and all you got left is God and your faith is in God, you won't change. It'll be hard. You have some hard places, but it'll work. If it's God's plan, you'll see you through it. Lack of self-control. Very often unable to control their emotions and really unconcerned with how anything they do affects other people. You have to be careful because you've got you to walk on eggshells around Because they get mad. Just like that. That's it. Yeah. You know, Dr. Hayden used to say, he corrected it. Don't say amen because everybody always says amen. Don't say amen because it's wrong. People say, well, mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Dr. Hank used to finish that up. He said, well, if mama getting the love of God, she wouldn't act like that no more. <laughs> that ain't popular, but it's true. That's what he said. This is for the women and the men. It works for everybody. <clears throat> Jealous. Envious. Always comparing with others. Always concerned with others. God's compared to them and all these kind of things. And it bothers them. As long as they're ahead, it's fine. But if they feel like anybody else is ahead, you've got to bring them under your love. No, you shouldn't just be able to be celebrated. If your heart's right, you'll be able to celebrate other people. That's right. Amen. Again, you don't find out what you're made of when you get blessed. You find out when you're facing hardships and you see somebody else gets blessed. The trust of God. That's when you find out what you got made of. We thank God if you're blessed, you drove up a new car today, you've been believing God He blessed you with. We'll find out what you really got when somebody else drives up one might be nice than yours. That's, right. That's when you find out if you got something in your heart or not. Amen. Amen. I'm not done. I know y'all want all of that. As I, as I think I ought to mention, but jealous and envious of others, yet delusional and believing that other people are jealous of them. You've seen this often, right? And when confronted about anything, don't dare confront them because they're defensive and combative. There's only one plan for us to follow. There's many more, but I'm not reading on everything I have. I'm not supposed to. We follow Ahab. We follow Naboth. Was Naboth wrong? Was Joseph wrong? No. What did either one of them do wrong? You see, this spirit shows up on the scene. I, I, I pray to... Go back to 1 Kings. I've got to give you this one thing. 1 Kings. This is my word. The other was my word. This is God's word. I broke my word and forgive me. We're going to keep God's word. First Kings, where was we at? 21. When this is addressed, go down to verse 17. Very, very important. You know, you know what happened. And I didn't go, I didn't have time to tell you everything. So this is what made this is this is family land. You have to go to 2 Kings 9, 26 or 7 to see this. But Naboth has this land. It's family land, so even if they kill him, his family just inherited it. He's got two boys, right? That's in 2 Kings 9. So, so what Jezebel sets up is these false witnesses. You know, the, the Naboth, is, is she signed the signet and, and the kings. She took control of this thing to take care and, and cater to big baby. Be careful you cater to. The big baby Ahab. And, and then she gets... Naboth killed, but not only Naboth, if you write and divide the word, she knew she's a planner. That doesn't mean you got a Jezebel spirit if you're a planner. But she was a planner, and she was thinking ahead. But she's a planner, and she didn't just kill Naboth or get him killed. She killed his two sons that would inherit it. She killed both of them too. Had both of them killed. And then, of course, you know that the, it came to Ahab, got back from that. But I want you to pay attention to this, and this is for the serves. And, and you ladies need to help them. After this happened, you know, because nobody knows about it, 
Again, this, I have people all the time that get so upset because they think people are getting away with stuff. Nobody's getting away with nothing. Amen. God knows everything. Amen. Nothing. The word works. It's getting caught up. Oh, so-and-so's getting... No, they're not. Nobody's getting away with nothing. You don't answer on this side or the other if you don't repent. But this is what God said after all this happened and this killing's gone. Verse 17, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, which he has gone down to possess him. He's enjoying this thing. He's, he's, this is mine now. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth. Shall lick the dogs, shall dogs lick thy blood, even yours. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because you have sold yourself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Stop this now. 21, last scripture. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall. And him that is shut up and left in Israel. So what's he saying? Number one thing we need to understand, and this is for you fellas. It didn't matter that Ahab let Jezebel take control. He was still accountable. God still confronted Ahab. Whether you take your place or not, sir, you're responsible for the direction of your home. You're accountable, and God's going to hold you accountable. It doesn't matter what the excuses are, you're accountable. And number two, you better do so because you might not know what this means unless you look it up. But he said in 21, I will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy posterity. You know what that means? See, this thing don't just affect you. Posterity means your descendants. All that follow you. You do this thing and what's it going to result in? Destruction. For you, right? Your family, right? Your children, right? Yes. Now, I just have to believe by the Holy Ghost. And the Lord said that would be the signifier. That would be the biggest thing. That's, I wasn't even going to read Genesis 39. I'm just reading it for myself this morning. It's about Joseph. Or I thought so. He said that would be the biggest thing because you've been barraged with this. So and so don't like me. So and so treat me this way. So and so said this. And so and so did that. You need to tell that person to get the love of God. That's sin. That's right. I said it's sin. Amen. If you've got a problem with somebody, you're supposed to talk to them. That's what the Bible says. You say, they did me wrong. It doesn't even matter. If James did me wrong, he's 100% wrong. If I go to Mike about James, I'm in sin. That's not what the Bible says. I'm going to talk to him about it. Right? I'm great because he's up there great like a chessy cat. <laughs> you got to know him. He's always thinking something. He might always say it. Stand your feet. Father, we love you in Jesus' name. We thank you for this day. You many blessings your hand upon us. Your spirit lead me in guidance. And Father, I can always say that I don't know who this applies for or how it applies or whatever, but I believe by the Holy Ghost and this ministry to people in this place today, and I believe that it, especially any particular man, that these things need to be going on there in their house. It doesn't mean go home be mean. doesn't mean go home and kick their wife out. doesn't mean the, the wife kicks the husband out. No, we're in covenant together. We're going to pray and seek God, be led by the Spirit of God, and we can simply say, I have prayed and sought God, and no, we're not going to make that decision. No, we pray for wisdom and direction for this, but God hasn't given it because it's not God's plan, and they'll be able to say, well, I kind of knew that in my heart all along, but I've just been listening and entertaining what the Lord said today in love. There's things you've been listening to and entertaining that you need to be the man and in love say this. You can ask my family. I never do it mean. Never do it mean. But I don't want to talk about this. We're not talking about this. You determine what comes in and out of your house. You determine what's talked about in your living room. You have authority on what's talked about in your bedroom. You say, well, we just want to talk. There's certain things you're not supposed to talk about. Why do you speak the Word of God? Because it grows. Become a reality. Anything you talk about, think about, what does the Bible say in Matthew 6? Take no thought saying. You say, my mind keeps running away with me because you won't be quiet. You keep talking about the wrong things. When you talk about the wrong things, and I know it goes both ways. It starts with a thought. But when you're steady talking about the wrong things, you're thinking about the wrong things. So you're kind of your own worst enemy. There's certain things in your home you've got to shut down. We don't do that here. They're going to rise up by the Holy Ghost and walk in their authority. Be the men of God. And I thank you for these ladies. we got a house full of ladies of God. I know that. This message has been against nobody. It's against the work of the enemy. 
And I will leave here saying today, you told me this was a process of progression that was happening in one of my families in the church. Now, you told me that. And I'm not denying that. I'm not going to generalize nothing. You said that. And you said to say these things, to open their eyes, to let them see. Don't take those steps because they're not of God. And don't listen to these things that are being said because their offense is there. There's offense in the home. And these things are being said out of offense. And it takes you further away from God. Pray and seek God do it His way. Every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you're hearing you say, Pastor, I don't know this Jesus is Lord and Savior in my life. I don't know. If I was to die today, I'd go to heaven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, you shall be saved. For whoever calls upon his name will be saved here in the day. You say, Pastor, I want you to pray with me to make Jesus Lord of my life without hesitation. Shook your hand up boldly. I'll be glad to pray for you today before you leave here with you. Number two, you say, I know I'm a Christian, but I got away from God. Thank God for God's blood, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, 1 John 1 9, if you confess that you sin, you're faithful and just. He's faithful and just. Give me to forgive you and cleanse you of your sins and all unrighteousness. You could be here today and you say, Pastor, thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy and mighty name. You're so good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so good. Thank you, Father. You're here today and you say, yes, I want you to pray with me to rededicate my life to God. Flip your hand up, boy, I'm glad to pray with you. God will forgive you for any, any way you missed it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can look up at me now. If you've got any special need, prayer requests for yourself anyway, you can come down here. I'll be glad to pray with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes. Two things. One of the things that stand in the gap for most of y'all know it. Mr. Ronnie Morgan. Gwen, Glenn's daddy. Uh, Carlos' his father in law. We believe in God. He's totally and completely healed and whole. In Jesus' name. And then something else that we believe for as well. Stretch your hands this way. Father, we thank you for Carlos. You said you look for man and woman to intercede the gap. We thank you stand in the gap today. We already set our faith and we're in agreement with them. Each and every one of them that's standing on the word that Mr. Ronnie is totally healed and whole in Jesus' name. We know the doctor said this might happen, that might happen, they might have to do this, they might have to do that. We stand on the word with this family that says, by the stripes of Jesus, he's healed and whole in Jesus' name. Everything's working just like he was created to. No problem, no complication. Now, this other family member that he's brought up, we thank you, Father, in this hard place, hard situation in life that she has the wisdom of God. These are situations that we have to have your wisdom, but we can make our own and not know what to do. But we thank you, she has the wisdom, she has the direction from heaven to know what to do, what to do, and how to do, to bring to pass the will, plan, and purpose of God. We take authority now over this other individual and the way Satan's been wreaking havoc in his life. We know that he wants to walk with you and you. We command you to Satan to stop with these existing operations of maneuvers now. In Jesus' name, take your hands off of God's vessel. And we thank you, he's hungry and on fire for you. Turn around 180 degrees in Jesus' name this day. Amen and, and amen. God is with us. Amen. Now, I just hesitate a while ago because I have no plans whatsoever. But coming next Sunday, I was going to preach on supernatural uh, provision. Y'all like that? But we're going to move into, at least next week, if not several weeks, we're going to move into ministering on God's divine design for your home and your family. It'll help you to move into walking in. God has not said this to hurt anybody. I hope you understand that. He said this to bring attention, to catch something that may be wrong in some people's lives and in the rest of your lives. You, you have to be careful because you can have people in your life that you think is the enemy and they're not the enemy. You need to listen to somebody's life. Amen? Now, if you have a spirit of Jezebel, you come down there now and I'll pray for you. I know y'all are going to flop down. I, that was the last thing I said, so I'm going to say that. I'm okay. joking. I'm okay. joking. Okay. What? <laughs> We're going to pray for another spirit if you got a Jezebel spirit. <laughs> We love you. We appreciate you. God is with us. You're dismissed.